and welcome. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL, and today we are doing something completely different. You can see this is basically set up like my normal live stream, um, but I'm going to try actually working on this. And I have to admit, I'm a little bit thrown by the whole thing. Hang on, I need to pull up my pattern. So that way I can kind of see that over on the side. Um, so we're starting off with a really flat piece here. This is basically probably just gonna be a bookmark. And um, you can see I've done another video before. I'll try to remember to put the link in the, in the comments or whatever, or at least below in the description, um, where I did a flat start like this. Now, basically, um, I, I already got this all set up because I wanna make sure I had it right. And I, I did it a few days ago while I was still working on my big project. And um, I just figured maybe for, maybe for just for general purposes, I'll show you what I did was I put the string underneath with a loop and I take it and I pull this up through that loop. And that's how I got all these placed on here. Now, here comes what the, the real tricky part is and the part that this is completely unrehearsed. And I'm, I'm really hoping this works out as I envision it in my head is, um, in order to normally okay let's first start with how i would normally do this my normal approach would be to start in the middle and just leave these taunt so that way it works out like it it should right i mean that's that seems easy peasy the problem here is because of the pattern that i chose what i really want to do is i want to start on an edge okay um and it turns out i can do i can do one knot while it's still nice and flat right so this one is supposed to come over this way and then over this way but the next thing that this ties to is this one right and that's why i have this piece of string here and we're gonna we're gonna try this out we're gonna see how this works um i'm gonna take this string and i'm gonna go around here okay and I'm going to clip, I got a slightly bigger clip here I'm going to use. And I'm going to clip this up to the top. And eh, we need to bring it down just a little bit. There we go. All right now, by holding this nice and tight, I can bring it right to the edge. And I can go ahead and I can tie this knot here. All right, so that's supposed to go over it and like continue off to the side. Now this does not want to stay put. So that clip that I took off, I'm just going to anchor this off to the side for the moment while I kind of get things lined up and do the next one. So this is not the most ideal start, obviously, but um, in case you're in a predicament like this, you can do the same thing yourself. Now, in order to have a nice flat start, let me stop for a second here and show you this. In order to have a flat start, you want to have the strings kind of going um, every other one, right? So like this green isn't going to show up. It's what the, the, the tan is getting tied to, right? And now that it's tied on, I can then take the tan and go across the other green, go across, right? So that's if... If you try to tie it, like each one gets like the next, I just, instead of going to the green, I go straight onto this. You will, this whole thing will bend. It'll end up coming down like a V or whatever, if you, unless you kind of spread it out like I did. So that's, let's see. So this one goes one, two, three. Yep. And then the fourth one goes off the side. Okay. So, so far, this is working, right? See, we're still nice and flat. And again, I'll have to use a clip to hold this one down just to kind of keep things going as it is. Eventually, what I'll do is once I have enough, I can then clip this in place. But right now, it's it's still a little dodgy, right? So, okay, so it's again, it's another happens to be another green here and another tan. So this one here, this one goes off the green and again back to the side. And let's see, this goes one, two, 
That's the first one. One, two, three, four, five. All right, this one's going to come back. Two. Three. Comes across this one. Four. And then this one, it comes back the other direction. Okay. So basically, I'm trying to get this arrowhead effect onto the side over here. This is why I'm, I'm having to actually look at the pattern. There's, um, as much as I know about the, the arrowhead patterns, this one is definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. Okay. Another big point here is keeping the tension together because, um, this is not wanting to stay as it, you know, as it should. Whoops, going the wrong direction there. Um, always keep a needle nearby. Mistakes are easy. All right. So this one goes off the blue first. Now, so I was saying, you got to get the tension nice and tight here because you're trying to... to form this and uh, you don't want gravity to try to give its own uh, whatever distorted look of the whole thing. So nice and tight knots, nice and consistent knots. And that's something if you're just beginning, you're, you're looking at my videos and you're trying to get inspired or whatever, consistent and tight knots are really key and getting your work to come out really nice. It's, yes, you can kind of stretch and pull and do some stuff afterwards, but the thing that's gonna make it come out outstanding is that, is that consistency. All right. Now, the one thing I don't like about this pattern already is that my two dark browns are really, really close to each other. One is slightly darker, but man, you really kind of have to hold it to the light to actually see that. Now, that's that's just something I, I'm not sure that these are the colors I'm actually going to use for the pillow that I'm making. But these were the colors that I had, and so I decided I would just kind of run with it and see how that went. So we'll, we'll see, right? All right, now this next one is the two darkest browns. So this one, I don't have to bounce it back and forth. They're both the same color. I can just go ahead and do a forward knot with this one. So now comes a very tricky part. We'll see how this is going to pan out. I need to do the same exact thing on the other side. Now, I do have a bit of this completed so that I should be able to um, clip this side, right? But we're going to have to work with this other side. So, unclip this one over here. Yeah, can you tell completely unscripted? Kind of, bear with me. So now we can clip this up here. And with that, I can actually take this string out, right? We're done with that. Didn't have to, it doesn't get knotted in or anything else. There's no whatever to it. Um, there we go. But now I need to do the same thing for this side, right? So. I'm going to need to clip this up. Let's see if this one will hold it. All right. So, kind of pin that down for a second while we get this started. And it's the same thing. It starts off to 
the right and then comes off to the left, which is, well, basically the opposite, right? That is how we did it before. And then this comes off to the side. I pulled that a little bit too hard there. There we go. All right. Hold that down for a second while we get the next one. Across the green. Across this. I think this is basically a burgundy. That's what I would call it. And I can unclip that. All right. And again, it's going to come down to the tension. This thing is trying to bend all over the place. It's going to come down to how I do the knots. Um, there, I kind of leveled it out a little bit, let it come down. So that way this will actually tie up a little bit better. Two... Three. Yeah, this is the one that bounces back. And once we get to the middle, I can then start to actually clip the thing down properly, which will make it a whole lot easier, obviously. But I wanted to be able to basically make this video and show like real time problem solving. Um, this is as real as it gets, you know, this is this is me trying to actually create a thing and um, it's working right I mean I'm getting it done this is gonna look really cool when I get done with it so yeah this is this is you know like they say art our life imitates art well, this is life and art all imitating um, a sense of knowing what I'm doing Trying to get keep that nice and flat. That's that's going to be the real telltale sign if this was success or not. Is how flat the top comes out. Like I said, you can kind of stretch and pull things around a bit afterwards, but if you can do it nice, consistent knots and do it right, it should come out just that much better. All right, now let's see if we can't bring this a little bit higher. There we go. Oh, the other thing that I should perhaps mention is that when I put all of the strings, uh, when I did the loop, I think it's, uh, it's a lark's head. I think it's a large head. When I put them all on, I had to make sure that they were all super compressed against each other. If not, the problem would be that it would it would have a very sloppy start. These things would be too far apart from each other to come out in a nice straight row. So that's that's really important. You they have to be. If you feel like they're almost too tight, then you're probably right about where it should be. And this is slipped out of the clip, but I'm controlling what it's doing by making sure that my knots are where they should be. Obviously, the red clip with the, the fold down thingies is much tighter than this blue one, which, much as I like the blue one, it's not doing me any favors today. All right, now this is the center one, and it's already has its nut over there. Now, the thing with this pattern, 
um, we didn't discuss this yet, is that it's arrowheads on the side and chevrons in the middle. And this is something I played around with before. I'll even show you a picture of it here. Um, it's just something I came up with. Uh, basically, the, what it comes down to, as far as if you're going to try to do a pattern like this for yourself, is that you know how the arrowhead looks. Make that. Then put in all of the underlying strings. Use my graph paper. Put in all of the underlying strings. And then um, you can see what is left. And then what is left is what essentially is going to make this whole thing um, pretty cool. So I think at this point, I'm going to change up the clips again. These ones are pretty seriously heavy duties. I'm going to pull our little string out here. That's no longer needed. Try to get this nice and straight. Put the clip on the other side here. And then we can start on these. Now my pattern that I have, um, I would normally share my patterns, but I kind of want to make... Um, some benefits for my patreon people they do a lot to help support me mostly um they they give me encouragement that's the first thing that's the most important part is they encourage me to do my craft to do my teachings um but they also help support me financially all right the camera that you can see me on that was not cheap in, or at least in my mind, it's not cheap. Maybe you guys make more money than I do. Um, but for me, it was beyond anything that I could afford. And my Patreon people helped me to buy that camera so that way I could videotape in high quality. And it's that kind of stuff that makes me indebted to them. And um, yeah, so the pattern, I gave it to them and... Uh, yeah, it's. I think that I think that's fair. I think that's what I kind of want to do, um, and I won't do it all the time. I, obviously, you can go to akwell.com. You can take a look. There's, you know, I do share a lot of tutorials, a lot of things there. It just happens to be, I think this pattern is pretty special, and um, I gave it to them. So yeah, that's it. So there's the chevron. It's just starting. You can kind of see building up with the colors. And what's going to happen is some of these colors are going to get used more than once because the, um, the way that it's going to interact with the arrowhead part. So now at this point, we can actually just use one clip. Right? Okay, so now what's next? These all come in um, just like one, two, and then three, it changes, right? And I double check my math over here. Yes. So anyways, if you were gonna try to make this for yourself, like I was saying, you can go on to the akwall.com. There's a little search thing over on the side and you can look for the graph paper um, that's already made. There comes in all different kinds of uh, sizes for whatever kind of size bracelet you want to do. You take the parts that you know, like the arrowhead in this example, and you put it all in. And then the area where you're going to make it different, you see what's left, right? One, from there, what you can do is you can, you can play with what's left. You can see what is capable. I just did something simple, the a, uh, arrowhead or the chevron is perhaps one of the easiest things that you could do as an alteration to this pattern, right? So maybe maybe you do that, maybe you do something else. Maybe you see from what is left, what could you do in that space? Maybe you do the chevron going the opposite direction. Maybe you do something completely your own. And this is how you can put your stamp on your artwork. And I, this that would be, if 
if I could do anything for you guys, that would be my, my one wish is to give you guys the tools and the encouragement and the inspiration to make your own art, to make something better than anybody's ever done before, or at least maybe something that you're proud of, like, because it's so intense or so beautiful or whatever it is. Um, that would be amazing. If you guys could do that, that would be great. And use the hashtag inspired by AKA wall. Cause I love to see this stuff. I, I know I haven't actually mentioned that one in a really long time. Um, I was just looking at that stuff the other day and I swear the people who, um, have been inspired by my stuff. Some of the things that you guys have made, it just warms my heart, man. I think it's amazing. I think that's totally awesome. All right, let's see. This one comes all the way out. And obviously you can tell I'm like really kind of tugging on this and, and pulling and that's why it's coming out of the clip is I'm trying to make sure it's really good and tight and turning out as it should and trying to shape it which it's not going quite how I'd like. Let me change up my clip again. This red one seems to hold a little bit better. All right. That, see, now I can pull at it and it's not coming out. So let's see. This is... Pretty sure it goes five. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three. Yeah. Four. Five. So I definitely encourage you guys to ask questions if you um you have problems trying to come up with a pattern. You're trying to figure out something. I had a person recently was making a bag and they were trying to figure out how they were going to form the base. And uh, I helped him with that. And I said to my, well, I can't say to my surprise, I knew that they were onto it. They had it figured out, but it turned out and it turned out amazing. And I'm, again, it really does my heart some good to see some really beautiful work coming from you guys um and that i could have helped with that i think that's it it's a good feeling i really enjoy so um and you know i mean if you want to if you want to help make these videos possible there's so many things you can do you can subscribe to the channel that's one that's just that's the easy freebie one right you can watch my videos because that will actually help me towards getting uh, monetized that would be great um you can leave lots of comments or you know give me a little encouragement or whatever that would be cool um, that actually helps youtube to actually go and um think there's something good going on here and and puts me like in front of more people so that's a really great one um you can Oh, you can hit that notification bell. That one's supposed to be, I'm not sure how that quite works. Um, I guess that if you're watching like the live streams or whatever, it's just came out again, that helps make YouTube think that, uh, there's good things happening here and makes them want to show more people, which that would be great. That would be amazing. Um, and of course then there's Patreon, right? So you could actually, if you know, couple bucks what i think the lowest was like five bucks or whatever um become a patreon supporter and help make it possible for me to do this as well as like so over on patreon right every month i, I have a bracelet giveaway um if we get to a level where i can actually afford more stamps i would like to actually do more giveaways because again it it feels good to me to get my stuff out into other people's hands and see other people excited about it. So yeah, 
if we could make that happen, that would be really cool. I, at least I think so. I mean, you tell me. You guys want freebie stuffs? Then let's make that happen. All right. So basically, I'm I'm doing the three going in this way, just like I did with the other side, and then it'll come back. And uh, yeah, this is. This is starting out pretty cool. Now, mind you, what I'm what I'm basically creating here is a little swatch that I can use um, to do some math to figure out how big um, or how many times I need to do this in order to make a pillow, right? So you, you've seen the big wall hanging thing I'm making, right? The big project, if you haven't, you should go check that out. Um, but I want to have that on the wall and then I want like in front of it a bench or something with a bunch of pillows on it that are also my work because obviously I'm not going to fill my house with giant wall hangings. The things just take way too long. Um, but I want to have my art in my home and um, I figured this is, this is the way I'm going to do it, you know, is with pillows and stuff, something, you know, it's not going to hang bracelets up. That's not, no, you don't, you don't become a master of knots and then just have bracelets laying around. It's just not, you know, not enough, at least in my mind. Right. So, um, this is going to be a pillow. And again, I'm not really sure about the colors. Like my first instinct on this pattern was where the, this fading brown was, was to maybe do something in like an aquamarine fade i think that would might look pretty cool not just not sure and oh the reason why i'm doing this while i still have the big project to go on is i need to order some of the light blue that goes to the big project and i figure while i'm ordering it i could order for the pillow um because obviously there's this whole thing about like if you buy more at once then you get a better pricing on it right so my hope here is that i can get a feel for like how much the the longer strings the darker browns here are going to get used versus the other so i can kind of try to gauge how which ones will get replaced the most and um hopefully if i get that right I, when I order the string, um, that's going to turn out okay, right? So that's, that is the goal. Um, so I'll buy enough string for this pillow, possibly one more, um, depending on like what the numbers come up to. And then um, from there, I can continue with the big project and know that the string I need to complete it will be coming in eventually, whenever that actually happens, that'll be good. All right. And we're almost back to the center part again, where we'll go back into doing the chevron. And uh, yeah, show you guys how this is going to look here. Mind you, one of the things I'm kind of suffering from here at the moment, if I seem a little slower, it's the humidity. This is Singapore, and it rained earlier, and then the sun came out, and of course it just made it super, super humid, and uh, it is absolutely hell on the hands. But it is what it is. Okay. So the blue is coming over again. And now it's this sort of a salmon, I guess, peachy salmon color. Mind you, I wanted the colors that were 
not the uh, the fade thing to be kind of good and contrasty and uh, so I kind of went with some blues some greens and this and then there's uh, the string that was going across the center there that's sort of a, a deep burgundy color so I was trying to create a little bit of contrast I wanted the two different styles to each have their own vibe to it There we go. Next is the screen. And as you may notice, when I'm doing these chevrons, I like to, if I'm on one side, I stay to that side and continue on because all the strings are basically just been sorted and are laying, you know, nice and still and, and right where they need to be. So it's just, uh, a matter of that makes it just slightly faster if i always went and started say on the right side um then i do the left then i go back to the right well it just kind of takes away some of the momentum so if kind of my way of of trying to make things go just a little bit quicker a little bit easier See, now that I'm on the right side, I'll take the next green and I will start again at the right. And it's not necessary. I mean, if you're more comfortable always starting from one side, that's that's completely fine. That's on you. Um, me personally, I think there's something about that change up that just sort of might make it just a little bit easier a little bit more aesthetic for myself i don't know it's it doesn't matter either way i don't want to create camps of you have to do it it's not necessary cool this is starting to I think you can start to really see how much contrast there is between the colors that I've chosen here. And just because like the this aqua one sorta fell in behind kinda early doesn't mean that it's out for good because the when these come back in, it's going to actually bounce it back again. So some of these colors get reused. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of neat. Plus, one of the other things that you'll see as it moves on is that the browns will actually come up here into the chevrons as well. Some of the browns that aren't getting used any longer, like the lightest, will end up through here. So when I, I created the, the contrast, but there's still these colors, the outside colors, will actually play a part in this. So, um, so again, this one only goes three before coming back. All right. And you can see that's just going to make this blue come back in. So the blue's already happened a couple times. It's going to happen again. All right. And then... This one's going to come up and it's going to take that kind of teal color and it's going to send it back in as well. So just because it seems that some might not get used much, um, it changes it up. It's this would I think really makes this pattern so much fun is there is this whole, um, what the underlying strings are doing and how they they interact with the pattern itself so yeah this is this is definitely fun well i think it's fun hopefully you find it fun too hopefully you're inspired um 
that is my my big goal here is I do want to take the nodding community and get them to try new things um, maybe help you solve some problems maybe you couldn't couldn't you wanted to do something like this before you thought about it you didn't know how hopefully my talking you through it um, helps you to actually see a means of how to do something different, something new, something exciting. This one just comes out four again. And at this point, if you know like how these the arrowhead works right you know that it just keeps doing the same thing so obviously that one goes all the way out to the side and then this one comes in and changes before it gets to the end just like it did be the one before and that will continue until it runs out so yeah relatively simple design at least once you get it going it's the getting these things started that's that's what you need graph paper for that's where you need to figure out like getting the strings in the right sequence to get it to do what you want it to do um and that's why i provide the stuff to do it like that's why the, the tools are available to you is so that way you guys can get in there and give this stuff a try for yourself and hopefully you come up with something so amazing that you're proud of it. Ooh, sorry about that. My uh, watch just hit the microphone. Getting a little wild with my, my arm swinging there. Okay. Time to do the other side. And again, this just comes in three. Quick and easy. I, we're definitely not doing the whole bracelet here today. Um, I might uh, do a second part to this, depending on how this goes along. I think the, the the bulk of what it takes to make it, we've pretty much covered that pretty well. Um, but I think it's just relatively, I don't have a timer or anything going here, so I don't know how long has this, start, this video has been running. Um, but I think if I'm going to, you know, I kind of want to have the, the completed thing to be able to actually add to the video to be able to show you what it was we were making. So I'm not really sure how to how I want to do this. Obviously, my biggest concern was how to get it started. That was first and foremost. That was that was an important part. The next part was how to um, figure out like where the, the turns and stuff go in it. Yeah, we figured that out. That's completed. Um, so, this is, honestly, this is where doing it live, it makes so much more sense to me, is if I could answer your guys' questions on the spot, um, then great, you know, I could actually uh, see what it is I, I haven't mentioned, what I could talk about that could you know, maybe make the difference for you um, to create this sort of thing. So yeah, um, so maybe what I'll do is when I get to where I'm gonna stop, maybe what I could do is uh, put this video up, let you guys comment on it, and then I could finish this with answering your questions. That might be fun. So, 
I don't really like having projects kind of partway done. Um, but I don't, I really don't see any other way of doing this where it makes sense because, uh, I don't want to make another one of these per se. And if I'm answering questions on it, it might make more sense to actually have it. So, yeah. And yes, I will be getting back to the big project. That's pretty, I'm still really committed to getting that thing finished. So there'll be plenty more live streams of me working on that, as well as me working on that in the, the times that you don't see me. Uh, I spend quite a bit of time working on it. So, so the salmon is kind of still coming up this direction. The blue is going to go over it. You could, by right, if you really wanted to mess with things, you could take the chevrons and actually, I could have taken like that salmon and forced the blue to come out by just doing a little zigzag thing there, right? Um, so if you want to try, kind of play with that, that's absolutely possible. Um, I'm kind of taking them as they come because I'm trying to figure out which string is going to get used the most and not trying to deliberately force one color over another. But um, yeah, there is some room for playing with these colors. You don't want to um, do that to the browns though, because if you do, the you're going to have to figure out how to counter that when you come back the other direction. So this is coming down in the arrowhead and then it's it goes from like really big to the small and then it's going to go back from small to big again. So I kind of need all of the strings to, to end up in the right place to actually do that on the other side. And uh, yeah, that was, again, something I kind of looked at through my using the graph paper and um, yeah, it turns out it's just fine. But if I started changing around the direction of where those strings are, they may not be where, right where I need them later on. So just be aware that that's a real possibility, you know? So now we got that kind of a teal aqua blue thing going on. And I'm going to be really happy. It looks to me like the next color is that deep kind of rich burgundy color. The two of those together are really going to be striking. And then is the lightest brown. And because it's going to be so contrasted with these other colors, it probably won't be all that noticeable to the average person that it was part of the fade. And that's what sort of makes these things fun is it kind of, it's, it had to be there, right? But it sort of looks like it was meant to be. So. You'll see that in a second here. So I'm curious, leave in the, in the comments, if you've watched this far along, I'm curious, what colors would you make this out of? If you were going to try this sort of thing yourself, whether it's a bookmark or a, a bag or um, an actual pillow like I'm going to do, whatever you're making, what colors do you see for this? You know, perhaps, perhaps maybe you don't want to fade. Maybe you want all the colors to look sort of random ish and let the pattern itself, um, carry the whole, uh, way that it, it works out. 
you know, because it doesn't, it didn't have to be a fade at all. I could have put together just a group of colors and made that happen. Um, and I'm sure that would be kind of fun as well, right? So what about you? What do you think? What would you want to see it in? Do you think the fade is, is you know, pretty much what makes it? Or, and if you actually make it, please tag me, say, you know, let me know this is what you're do made or what you're working on. I'd really like to see it. I'd like to see some different possibilities. It saves me the trouble of having to make multitudes to see all the different possible combinations, right? So, yeah, I'd absolutely love to see what you come up with. So, here we go light brown coming in and because there's such a contrast between it and that darker brown it just looks like it belongs right i love it that is great and let's do the other side And yeah, this right here obviously is a pattern that moves along pretty quickly. I mean, I don't feel I've been at the desk for very long at all. And we are definitely approaching towards the halfway point. And that's where the whole thing flips itself and goes back the other direction. So yeah, I, I definitely kind of feel like this is an approachable pattern. Something that, you know, maybe you want to give it a try. Let's, let's take a look at what we got here. All right. A little more light on that. So there you have it. An arrowhead with a chevron. Basically got it going on here. Um, Obviously, the pattern is going to actually help, like having an actual drawn out pattern will help me to know when I hit the middle point hit down here. Um, these are going to come out and all the way to the edges or whatever. And um, yeah, this is, I think this is enough for today. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, try to get those in quickly so that way I can put together the video and actually get that sorted out for you guys. I want to thank all my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely the best. I can't do it without you. So thank you very much for all of your, your contributions, both financially as well as motivating me with, with your comments and being there for the live videos and stuff. So, all right. Um, I will be back again on Saturday at 10 p.m. Singapore time with a live stream uh, with the big project. And um, yeah, so until next time, don't get your strings in a bunch.